Welcome to Waldorf College. I'm Mark Newcomb, and this is COM 1020, DigiCore, Unit 2. In Unit 2, we'll discover what it means to use Creative Commons, apply that new discovery to Flickr, take a broader look at social media, and we'll use lynda.com, Social Media Marketing, Chapters 3 and 5, to discover the difference between a Facebook profile and a Facebook page. Let's get it all started with Creative Commons. This is Copyright and Creative Commons Explained by CommonCraft. Julia's dream is to make a living as a photographer. In this dream, she takes amazing photos, people buy them, and their purchases fund her future work. But it's not that simple. Julia wants to publish some of her photos to help spread the word. But she's concerned because photos are easy to copy. She could lose control and not be able to make a living from her talent. So she does some research and learns that in the U.S., as with other countries, we have laws that give creators of materials like books, images, movies, artwork, and music a way to own and protect their creations. It's called copyright law. Owning the copyright means having the exclusive right to manage and sell the material. And she's surprised to find that when she creates photos, she owns the copyright to them automatically without taking any other action though she can always register them with the U.S. Copyright Office for good measure. She likes being covered by copyright law, but it limits her exposure because her permission is required for sharing a photo. She needs a way to make some of her photos more shareable. Her research leads her to Creative Commons, which is a set of licenses that she can use to make her copyrighted photos free for sharing. By licensing specific photos with a Creative Commons license, she doesn't have to approve each person's request for sharing, as long as a few simple rules are followed. She chooses a license that requires the user to provide attribution, or credit for her work, and to be used non-commercially. Using Creative Commons means she retains some rights, while her photos and name have the potential to be seen by many more people, because they can be shared for free. After considering the options, Julia decides to license a few photos with Creative Commons and use copyright with all rights reserved for the rest of her portfolio because it will be important for her goals. So she adds copyright information, which includes the year the photo was first taken and her name wherever those photos appear. Across the country, Kelly needs a travel photo for his magazine article. He searches and finds a nice one online and notes a Creative Commons license and Julia's name. His use is commercial, so he visits her site and finds more photos that fit his needs. The one he wants is marked All Rights Reserved, so to avoid copyright infringement and potential legal issues, he contacts Julia, who gives him permission to use the photo in exchange for a license fee. This way, Kelly can use the photo in his magazine and Julia can build her career. Both Kelly and Julia understand that ownership and proper use of materials can be difficult to navigate, especially because the web is global and copyright laws can vary by country. So here are a few things they always consider. When they see a copyright symbol or notice, they ask the creator about proper use, and they still ask even if they don't see a symbol. When they see Creative Commons licenses like these, they know they can share the material for free as long as they follow the rules of the license, found at creativecommons.org. Both copyright and Creative Commons are important parts of a system that come with a responsibility to follow rules. Rules that support the future work of people and organizations who can make our world a better place. I'm Lee LaFever, and this has been Copyright and Creative Commons Explained by CommonCraft. Copyright is exclusive and automatic. In return, the responsible use of others' creative works is to ask permission. If the work is not original to you, then you must ask permission to use and share the creative work. In a global market like the web, this may no longer be practical. If I place something on the web that a global audience responds to and now wants to use or distribute, I may be unable to answer all the requests. That's where Creative Commons fills the need. 
It's through Creative Commons that we're able to retain some rights, but enable others to use and distribute and display, as well as learn and be inspired by our creative wealth. It's the Creative Commons that allows us to share our creativity and collectively accomplish greater things. Together, we can collaborate and build a richer, brighter, and more vibrant culture. When you share your creativity, you're enabling people anywhere to use it, learn from it, and be inspired by it. Take the teacher who shapes young minds with work and wisdom from around the globe, and the artist who builds beauty out of bits and pieces she finds online, and the writer whose stories use ideas and images crafted by people you've never even met. These people know that when you share your creative wealth, you can accomplish great things. They and millions of other people all around the planet are working together to build a richer, better, more vibrant culture using Creative Commons. To understand Creative Commons, you need to know a little bit about how copyright works. Did you know that when you create something, anything, from a photograph, to a song, to a drawing, to a film, to a story, you automatically own an all rights reserved copyright to that creativity. It's true. Copyright protects your creativity against uses you don't consent to. But sometimes full copyright is too restrictive. What about when you want all those millions and millions of people out there to use your work without the hassle of coming to you for permission? What if you want your work to be freely shared, reused, and built upon by the rest of the world? Luckily, there's an answer. Creative Commons. We provide free copyright licenses you can use to tell people exactly which parts of your copyright you're happy to give to the public. It's easy. It only takes a minute, and it's totally free. Just come to our website and answer a few quick questions, like, will you allow commercial uses of your work? And will you allow your work to be modified? Based on your answers, we'll give you a license that clearly communicates what people can and can't do with your creativity. You don't give up your copyright. You refine it so it works better for you. Welcome to a new world where collaboration rules. It didn't even exist just a few years ago, but now there are millions and millions of songs, pictures, videos, and written works available to share, reuse, and remix, all for free. Want to work together? Then join the Commons, Creative Commons. Creative Commons, a flexible copyright license for online assets. We'll need to make four choices when selecting a Creative Commons license. The first is buy or attribution. When we select attribution or buy, we're telling others that they can copy, distribute, display, perform, or remix your work if they credit your name as requested by you. The next decision we make is non-commercial. By choosing non-commercial, we tell others they can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work, but for non-commercial purposes only. No derivative. No derivative says that others can only copy, distribute, display, perform verbatim copies of your work. They're not allowed to actually alter your work. Sharealike allows others to distribute your work only under a license identical to the one you have chosen for your work. It's a great license to allow for collaboration for altering of the asset that you place on the web. It allows others to change and alter your work and take it to their own creative level. And so what do you say? Let's build a Creative Commons license. When I attach a Creative Commons license, I use attribution by non-commercial no derivative. This license states that if my asset is shared or used, that my name needs to be included, that they're not allowed to make money from it, and that they're not allowed to change it. 
If I change the no derivative to share as, I'm encouraging others to take my asset and to change it and to make it something of their own. This is a great collaboration that can happen on the internet, a place where many resources can be gathered and mixed and mashed together to create that vibrant, richer culture. Okay, so we've talked about it, we've looked at it, we've watched the videos about it. What do you say we go attach a Creative Commons license to our Flickr sets? So I'm going to jump back into Flickr. Here we are in Flickr. Remember, we created sets, and uh, here are my sets. You have many more than I do. I've got some homework to do. And remember, under Organize, that that's where we created sets. And in Organize, there's a great thing called a Batch Editor. So I'm going to go there, and my hope is to change the license for these photos. They're currently under Copyright, All Rights Reserved. So you can see the tab here, Batch Organize. That's the one I want to use. I'm going to go down and select all my photos and pull them into the center editing section here. So now they're in Batch Edit or Organize. And underneath the Permissions tab, I have many choices here. But the one that I'd like to choose is the one that says Change Licensing. So I'll select that. And look at this. This looks pretty common to us, doesn't it? Here are all the license, non-commercial, share-alikes, um, all the things that we've just talked to here. And notice the, about the third one down, I'll choose Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives, Creative Commons. And again, this is the most common license that I use. And the one that I want to use here, these are pictures of me. I don't think I want people to make derivatives of that. Who knows what they'll draw? So I'll go down and I'll say Change License. <laughs> So what I do, it's changing the license on all four items or any of the items that I've drug into this editing space. And I simply get to go here and click Thanks. And I've changed the license. Now I want to make sure that it's changed. So I'm going to go over to your photo stream, and I'll go back to my photo stream. It's telling me that we're going to leave the page, which is what I want to do. And here I am. I'm back into my photo stream, and check it out. My license has been changed. I now have a Creative Commons instead of an all rights reserved copyright. So these pictures can be displayed and shared as long as they give attribution, non-commercial, and no derivative. It's that simple. This is one of the things I love about Flickr. So there's Creative Commons. Let's take a broader look at social networking. The truth is, we've always had social networks. Charles knew Oliver, and Oliver knew both a good blacksmith and a successful woman who might be perfect for Charles. But in the past, these network connections were hard to use because Oliver's network was hidden from view. Charles couldn't see who Oliver knew. These days, the internet has changed this by making these connections visible on websites, and that makes all kinds of things possible. This is social networking, explained by CommonCraft. Meet Maria. She's been hearing a lot about websites like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google+, but never thought they would be valuable to her. Recently, she was invited to a social networking site by her friend Joan and logged in without knowing what to expect. She got started by sharing some basic information and a photo and adjusting privacy settings. She saw that Joan was now her friend on the site, but she wondered, now what? Within a day or so, Updates from Joan started to appear on her page. She saw photos, links, and notices about Joan's activities on the site and enjoyed following along. Then Maria noticed that Joan's name was a link, so she clicked it and arrived at Joan's page. Joan was connected to hundreds of people, organizations, and groups and had interesting updates on her page. She was also using the website to play games, organize events, and have conversations with friends. Joan's network was visible. Suddenly, it became clear. She could have a network like Joan's. She just needed to connect to more people she knows. And Joan's page was the perfect place to start. So, she found people she knew, clicked their names, and added them as her friends on the site. Then, she searched for her favorite band and restaurant and clicked a button to get their updates too. Within a few days, her page was full of interesting updates that were useful to her. And email addresses didn't matter. She could always contact her friends using the website. Soon, Maria started to post her own updates. Her friends liked her posts and left comments. 
Instead of being hidden, social networking made events, people, and media visible and on her page every day. For Maria and millions of others, it provides online places to connect to and build relationships with whom and what matters. I'm Lee LaFever, and this has been Social Networking, explained by CommonCraft. Well, this week's reading in Lynda.com, Social Media Marketing Chapters 3 and 5, took us to the next level, comparing a Facebook profile and augmenting it to show us what a Facebook page and the advantages of having a Facebook page. So let's take a deeper look into this idea of a Facebook page and the six big differences of a Facebook page. A big difference between a Facebook profile and a Facebook page is that a page does not have a news feed view, but always displays in a timeline view. So here we are in Facebook. Here's the communications Facebook page. It's on the left, and I have a profile, my profile, that's there on the right. So as you look at the Facebook page for communications here, you can see that everything's in a timeline view. There is no news feed Big difference from the pro personal profile that's here on the left where I have a news feed and messages and events. And you can see that the majority of the activity that happens in my profile is actually fed by all my friends and people who post in the news feed. That doesn't happen on a Facebook page. Another big difference is that in a Facebook page, all posts are public. In a Facebook page, your timeline is organized in four ways. You can organize your timeline by highlights, friend activity, post by page, or post by others. So let's go look at that. Because we don't have a news feed, then we need to decide how to organize our timeline. So you can see in this pull-down menu, it defaults to highlights, but I can do friends, post by page, or post by others. The default for highlights is important. It allows you to have your post at the top and to organize your timeline by your own post. Because you don't have a news feed, you will need to post more often and it will require more attention on your part to help keep your site fresh. In a Facebook page, you can always like other pages, but you're not allowed to like personal profile posts. And the last is the ability to add multiple administrators. Now, this is a great advantage for a site who has multiple people taking care of it. Let's go out and take a look at what that looks like. So again, here on the left is the Facebook page. So if I go up and under the Edit page, in this pull-down menu, you'll see there's an Admin Roles. I'll click on that. And there are four administrators for the comm site, Dave Dam, Tiffany, Betsy, and myself. Under Manager, if I click, there are several roles that I can assign to a manager. Now, when you originally add someone as a manager, they will default to a manager with godlike powers. So be aware, when you make someone a manager, originally they'll have godlike powers until you come in and assign them a role. They can be a content creator, a moderator, an advertiser, or insights analysis. And you can see that their role gains an authority or gets less authority as they go down this list. So it's very important. This is a great place to actually assign roles for different people who need to take care of your page. Chances are right now you're the only one, but as it grows, it may be that you'll have more. But also be aware that the default is manager, that a manager has godlike powers and can actually remove you as a manager and you'll no longer have access to your site. So be careful with this one. It's a great advantage and a big difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook profile. Features. Facebook features. Milestones. Milestones allow you to create and post date timeline events. So let's open up the communications page again here. Here's the Facebook page for communications. And you'll notice that it's in a timeline mode and that the timeline is made up of milestones. Each of these posts are a milestone and they're dated. And you can see the chronology here over on the left. Here are all the milestones. So I can go back in time and look at Facebook. I Go back to 1999. That's well before Facebook was ever around. <laughs> here are some uh, photos and pics from The Warrior, which was the yearbook that was here. Oh my goodness, look at some of those students. I'm even in there in a ponytail, as embarrassing <laughs> as that is. 
and they're in chronological order as you move up and down the timeline with the most recent at the top. Now, if I wanted to change a milestone's date, perhaps I'm post-dating some pictures that I took maybe a year ago or even a week ago, and I want to make sure that they fall in my timeline in the correct space, then I can go up here and hit Edit, and under Edit, I can change date. So that's milestones in Facebook. Pin to the top. Pin to the top will allow you to take a post no matter when it was posted and place it at the top of your timeline and it'll stay there for seven days. So here we are back again uh, in the Facebook page. You can see that we've got all kinds of things posted here. I'm going to go over to the Wall TV KZOW Spring Photo Shoot and I'll select it and decide that I want this to be pinned to the top. So if I go to the pencil tool here, you'll notice at the top it says pin to the top. And if I select that, then Facebook is going to take this post and put it at the top of my timeline. So I'll scroll down here. You can see now that it this is pinned to the top. And I know that it's pinned to the top because it has this little yellow flag that's at the top. And it's telling me that, hey, I'm pinned to the top. Now let's stay here for seven days. Now I can go down and actually hit this edit or remove the pencil button. And if I click on it, it will allow me to unpin from the top. And when I do, Facebook will take this post and put it back down in my timeline in the time and date where it originally should have been posted. So pin to the top, a feature in Facebook. Another feature is highlight. Highlight allows you to stretch a post over two columns. So I'm back in the communications Facebook page here, and you'll notice that as we go up and down the timeline that I have post on either side. These are all milestones of things that have happened. But notice the Christmas party over here. We've got some pics and an invitation, and the invitation seems to have someone's hand over here. I think there's somebody missing from this. So if I hit highlight, I'll be able to take this post and milestone and stretch it over two columns, and now, ah, it was Betsy. We get to see all four of us now in it. Now this is a better layout for this post. Now, if I decide that I don't want to keep this over two columns, it's as simple as just going back, and I can click the little star that's above here, and get back there, and by I'll remove the highlight, and it goes back to dual column. So it, it might be that there are some posts that make sense to keep as a highlight, and here's the com bowling, and you can see the layout of this one. It looks nice as a highlight, so on our timeline, we keep that one in a highlight. Another feature are notes. Notes are a beautiful thing and highly underused in Facebook. It allows you to format, edit, and post post longer than the maximum character limit, which is something just under 63,000. Not many times you're going to post. But it's linkable, which is a huge, and the pagination makes a big difference. So let's go out and look at Facebook's. Notice uh, here. Let's go out to Facebook, and I can click on the apps here. I'm going to add an app. The app I'm adding is called Notes. I'll click on Notes, and it tells me I haven't ever written anything here. Well, that makes sense. I just added it. So I'll click on the Write a Note, and here I'm in a section where I can go in and actually type something. So I'm going to type in a title here of, um, let's do Online Course Descriptions. I'll put that in. Um, looks like I need to spell it correctly here. Let me back up here and put the uh, P in for description. I think I can do that correctly. And now I'm going to go out to Word, and I'm going to copy-paste something in a document off the computer here and bring it back in. I'm going to go paste. So this came directly out of a Word document. And notice how I have bold, and I've got, I can indent. I can change my font style. Uh, I could do numbered list here, or any kind of pagination works inside of Notes. So that's a huge advantage, something I can't do other places in Facebook. And I can also put tags here. So I can go in and put Waldorf, um, and then I'll go in and do Waldorf Communications as well. And then I'll publish this site. And Facebook creates this note for me, and it's been published. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to go out and make sure that it's there. So I'm going to back out here and go back to my Facebook page and go over to my apps again. And I'll click on the app to reveal the notes. Look, there's a note here now. So I'll click on the note. And notice it gives me a short description of the note. I have a link at the title, or I can go down to where it says full 
view full note and click on it either place, and here it is, a note with its pagination. And people can actually comment on it or like it as well, just like Facebook or Share. And something even more significant, let's go up to the top here and notice that this note has a unique URL. That means that I can copy and paste this and send it to someone in an email or into a message or a text. That's a huge advantage. So notes inside of Facebook, a cool feature. Now, there are three things that affect edge rank. Now, edge rank, when you're in your personal profile and in a news feed, whatever is at the top, someone had to decide that was at the top. We call that edge rank. So Facebook has a formula that goes through and decides how your news feed gets fed. And edge rank is the way it does that. So there are three things that affect your edge rank. The first one is called recency. The most recent posts are most likely to be chosen. The second is affinity. How often viewers interact, comment, or share your post will affect your edge rank. Often you'll find people who will include a question or even make a trivia question inside their post to try to increase their affinity. Edge weight. By including pictures, videos, and links, you increase your edge weight, which overall will increase your edge rank. So the three things that affect edge rank are recency, affinity, and edge weight. Well, the assignment for Unit 2 in lynda.com is Chapters 3 and 5 from Facebook, Social Media Marketing. Uh, You have a Facebook assignment. Your Facebook assignment is to create a Facebook page. You'll need a profile first to do that. You'll need to put in a profile pic, and lynda.com lets us know that that's a picture that needs to be 180 pixels by 180 pixels square. Behind that, you'll want to put in a, a cover image, which will be 851 pixels by 315. All of these will come right out of your Flickr, and you'll be able to take those uh, images and put them inside your Facebook. You'll also need to create five posts, which will become milestones in your timeline. And this one's going to take a little more legwork on your part. You'll need 30 likes. Now, more often than not, what happens is you use your Facebook or Twitter to say, hey, like my Facebook page. And what people will do instead is like the post that you just sent or the tweet that you just sent out to them. That will not increase your likes on your page. They'll have to physically go out to your Facebook page on the web and press the like button on your Facebook page up uh, in your uh, cover image area. So you'll need to do 30 likes. That's your Facebook assignment for this week. And that wraps up Unit 2 for us. I'm Mark Newcomb. It's been a pleasure spending time with you again this week. Look forward to seeing you next week.